Abengo S.A. Spanish pronunciation, Abita Eoa, is a Spanish multinational corporation, which includes companies in the domains of energy, telecommunications, transportation, and the environment. The company was founded in 1941 by Javier Benjumea Puigcherva and José Manuel Abaure Fernandé Pasalagua, and is based in Seville, Spain with U.S. headquarters in St. Louis, Missouri. It is a global biotechnology company specializing in the development of new technologies in producing biofuels and biochemicals and promoting sustainability of raw materials. Abengoa invests in research in sustainable technology, and implements these technologies in Spain as well as exporting them globally. These technologies include concentrated solar power, second-generation biofuels, and desalination. In 2014, Abengoa and subsidiaries employed approximately 20,250 people, operating in more than 80 countries. Topic: Subsidiaries. Topic: Professor. Professor is an Abengoa subsidiary specializing in the integral management of industrial wastes and the generation and management of water. Topic Abengoa Solar Abengoa began its involvement in the development of solar technologies in 1984 with the construction of the Solar Almeria platform in Spain. In 2008, the U.S. Department of Energy awarded Abengoa Solar two research and development projects in the field of concentrating solar power CSP, that total over $14 million. The goal of the R&D program is to develop CSP technologies that are competitive with conventional energy sources grid parity by 2015. On July 3, 2010, U.S. President Barack Obama announced that the U.S. Department of Energy conditionally committed to offering a $1.45 billion loan guarantee to support construction by Abengoa Solar of the Solana Generating Station, in Maricopa County, Arizona. It is set to begin operation in 2013. Operational October 2013, the Mojave Solar Project in the Mojave Desert in California entered commercial operation in 2014. Abengo are constructing three CSP plants in South Africa for ESCOM, CHI 50 megawatts, SINA 100 megawatts, and CACSU 100 megawatts. Abengo are also constructing a 400 kV transmission line for ESCOM. Topic: Abengoa Bioenergy. Abengoa Bioenergy is a global biotechnology company specializing in the development of new technologies in producing biofuels and biochemicals and promoting sustainability of raw materials. AB is currently constructing a biomass to ethanol facility in Hugoton, Kansas that will produce second generation biofuels. This refinery is forecast to be online and in full production by the end of 2013 or early 2014. The facility will be operated by Abengoa Bioenergy Biomass of Kansas, a company of Abengoa Bioenergy. The Hugoton plant never did reach production level and was shuttered as a failure in 2015 with all its employees out of a job. The project was yet another fleecing of the American taxpayer. Abengoa Bioenergy also has a joint venture biofuel plant with Ebro Puleva. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Feedstocks. The feedstock comprises woody and non-woody cellulosic biomass provided by plant biomass, agricultural wastes, forestry residues, and sugar processing residues. Currently the most important grain cereal for production of bioethanol in Abengoa Bioenergy's plants are wheat, barley, corn and sorghum. In Abengoa Bioenergy Brazil, the company grows sugarcane while maintaining sustainable rural development methods, biodiversity, and regional economic growth. 
Other plants produce second-generation bioethanol from a combination of corn stover, wheat straw, oat straw, barley straw, hardwood, switchgrass. Converting starch from cereals through fermentation creates a high-protein co-product that is a source of vegetable protein, energy, fiber and vitamins, and is used to produce cattle feed. Pre-treatment Lignocellulosic raw material is first milled and cleaned before pre-treatment. Pre-treatment consists of contacting the cellulosic biomass feedstock with an acidic liquid medium to form an acid-impregnated biomass feedstock, then contacting the feedstock with H2O at elevated temperature and pressure to solubilize hemicellulose resulting in a steam-treated feedstock. The biomass is then subjected to a depressurization zone to further solubilize hemicellulose and producing a volatilized fraction. Temperature and pressure within the depressurization zone is controlled by releasing a portion of the volatilized fraction. <laughs> Acid impregnation Acid impregnation prepares the feedstock for enzymatic hydrolysis to produce fermentable sugars by increasing bioavailability of feedstock. Feedstock is introduced to an acid impregnation vessel consisting of hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid, sulfur dioxide, nitric acid, and combinations thereof. The acidic liquid medium contains an acid concentration of less than 5 Wt%. Acid impregnation involves soaking or spraying the liquid medium to the feedstock. Either method involves agitation or mixing for 1 to 13 minutes to promote dispersion of the acid throughout the feedstock. Impregnation of feedstock results in degradation of fibers as the hold time and temperature reach certain limits. Topic: Soaking when soaking, the entire mass of feedstock is submerged in acidic liquid medium to promote bulk movement of the feedstock to provide dynamic and continuous contact of the feedstock and acidic liquid medium. To promote dynamic physical contact and dispersion of the acidic liquid medium to feedstock, the feedstock – acidic liquid medium slurry is agitated. Soaked biomass feedstock is dewatered to reduce its moisture content. Topic. Spraying Less acidic liquid medium is used so material costs are reduced, and avoids the need for dewatering. The feedstock is agitated to disperse the acid throughout the feedstock. Topic. Wetting agent Acidic liquid medium may include a surfactant to promote dispersion of acid throughout the resulting acid impregnated biomass slurry by reducing surface tension of the liquid medium. Suitable surfactants are biodegradable, non-toxic, and are commercially available. Non-ionic surfactants are preferred as their performance is unaffected by the presence of an acidic liquid medium, such as alcohols. Heating during acid impregnation is also employed to promote dispersion of acid throughout the resulting acid impregnated biomass slurry. The biomass feedstock, dilute acid mixture is heated to temperatures of at least 10 to 40 C. However, heating at this stage does not significantly solubilize hemicellulose component. Instead it is used to minimize and avoid solubilization of hemicellulose. The feedstock is heated in a low moisture environment of a relative humidity of less than 80 to 100%, specifically less than 50 to 70 Wt%. Moisture inhibits the dispersion of acid throughout the feedstock or results in an uneven acid dispersion. Low moisture content of acid impregnated feedstock reduces the energy required during subsequent heating. 
Acid impregnated feedstock results in a slurry with biomass solids dispersed throughout the acidic liquid medium with total solids of at least 25 Wt percent (0.35 to 0.65 g solids per gram wet mixture. Temperature of the acid impregnated biomass becomes the same as the acidic liquid medium (20 to 95 C). Additionally the pH of the acid impregnated biomass becomes less than 4. Total glucan content of acid impregnated feedstock is about 25 to 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Steam treatment Steam explosion. After acid impregnation, the feedstock is subjected to elevated temperature and pressure in the presence of H2O, then discharged to an environment of reduced pressure to break down the cellulose-hemicellulose lignin complex. Steam treatment dissociates cellulose from hemicellulose and lignin for enzymatic hydrolysis to produce fermentable sugars. Steam is introduced at a pressure of at least 75 to 150 psig. The acid impregnated feedstock and H2O are introduced into the same vessel under a pressure of about 75 to 250 psig. Temperature of steam is about 160 to 220 C. Uniform moisture from the water vapor of steam treatment promotes uniform temperature of the feedstock. To promote even temperature distribution throughout the vessel, the total solids content of the feedstock is maintained from about 30 to 70 Wt% percent by direct steam injection as higher moisture feedstocks hinders steam penetration and heat transfer throughout the feedstock. If necessary, feedstock may be dewatered by removing excess acidic liquid medium using a mechanical solid-liquid separation device such as a dewatering screw press. The abrupt change in pressure by withdrawing or removing the pretreated feedstock to a vessel of reduced pressure above atmospheric pressure degrades the lignin hemicellulose cellulose complex. To maintain adequate and rapid depressurization for effective degradation of fiber structures, the pressure at the outlet differs by less than 50 to 100 psig. Steam treatment reduces the size of particulate solids of the acid impregnated feedstock to provide an increase in exposed surface area of cellulose and or hemicellulose for enzymatic hydrolysis. Topic Enzyme supplier Dyadic International is a global biotechnology company focused on the discovery, development, manufacturing, and sale of enzyme and protein products for bioenergy, biochemical, biopharmaceutical and industrial enzyme industries. Dyadic utilizes its patented C1 fungus to develop and manufacture low-cost proteins and enzymes for diverse market opportunities. Dyadic actively pursues licensing arrangements and other commercial opportunities to leverage the value of their technologies by providing its partners with the benefits of manufacturing and or utilizing the enzymes which these technologies help produce. Dyadic's license agreement with Abengoa Bioenergy gives them the right to use Dyadic's C1 platform technology to develop, manufacture and sell enzymes for use in second generation biorefining processes to convert biomass into sugars for the production of fuels. C1 is based on the Myceliopthora thermophila fungal expression system for gene discovery, expression, and production of enzymes and other proteins. Dyadic scientists have developed strains of this fungal microorganism to go from gene discovery to commercial manufacturing using the same host organism. Its integrated and patented C1 platform eliminates many of the bottlenecks of protein discovery, development, scale-up and commercialization. Thus, enabling new product introduction with less time, cost and risk. DNA from various sources including individual organisms, environmental samples, or collections of genes can be fragmented and cloned into Dyadic's specialized C1 expression vectors. The resulting cultures are distributed into cultures and are allowed to grow to create a gene expression library. The collection can be further used to create replicates, or stored away for later use. 
The target protein are screened against the gene library. To make a commercially viable product, dyadic researchers use the C1 Express hyperproducing protein expression system to increase the expression level of the gene of interest. Because the same C1 organism is used for gene discovery and expression, the probability of successfully increasing the level of protein expression is very high. Dyadic currently sells more than 55 enzyme products to more than 150 industrial customers in approximately 50 countries for a broad range of industries including biofuels, bio-based chemicals, biopharmaceuticals, animal health and nutrition, pulp and paper, textiles, food and beverage, and nutraceuticals. Topic. Pilot plants and commercialization Topic <inaudible> York Pilot Plant Nebraska US A Bengoa's biomass pilot plant opened in 2008 in York Nebraska this $35 million biomass facility will exclusively research and develop ethanol production processes using enzymatic hydrolysis and lignocellulosic biomass as a feedstock. The York facility will research and test proprietary technology for its commercial scale facilities. The plant currently operates at 100% of its capacity and continues to demonstrate excellent efficiency and consistent operation. The York Pilot Plant uses an annual consumption of 520,000 tons of corn stover to produce 56 mgal 210 megaliters of bioethanol per year, through continuous batch cooking and fermenting process. <laughs> BCYL Demonstration Plant Salamanca, Spain. In 2009, the biomass plant Biocarbrontes Castilla y Leon BCYL started operation as the first demonstration plant to process biomass to ethanol on a commercial scale. The plant produces 1.3 mgal per year using wheat and barley straw biomass. Topic. Hugoton Commercial Hybrid Biomass Plant Kansas, US. The construction of this commercial-scale biorefinery facility by Abengoa Bioenergy Biomass of Kansas ABBK will allow them to use their proprietary technology that they've been developing over the last 10 years to produce cost-effective and renewable liquid fuel from plant fiber or cellulosic biomass. The plant will produce 25 mgal per year from 350,000 tons of biomass per year. The residues of the biorefinery process will be combusted with 300 tons per day of fry, raw biomass material to produce 18 MW of electricity to power the entire facility to make it energy efficient and environmentally friendly. The plant is expected to be in full production by the end of 2013 or early 2014. The plant officially opened on October 17, 2014. The plant shut down its operation on December 10, 2015. Topic: <laughs> Abinza Engineering and Construction. Abinza is the branch of Abengoa responsible for engineering and construction. This company is consolidated Abina Engineering and Construction Services, Tima, and Abacus Project Management. <laughs> <laughs> Financial difficulties In January 2015, Abengoa announced it had raised $328 million from selling shares at its U.S. division following further purchases of their stock from banks underwriting the offer. In November 25, 2015, Abengoa started insolvency proceedings, which could lead to Spain's largest bankruptcy on record, after Agonvari said it would not inject €350 million Euros into the engineering and renewables company. 
In a 2016 effort to avoid bankruptcy, Abengoa is seeking to reduce its size by 30% by selling subsidiaries. On February 15, 2016, a Nebraska grain dealer filed a petition to force Abengoa Bioenergy into bankruptcy so as to recover monies owed to them for past corn deliveries. On March 29, 2016, Abengoa filed for bankruptcy in the United States. Topic Competitors CIE Automotive's subsidiary Biona Biodiesel Ents Ferrostyle Topic See also Concentrating solar power Renewable energy companies on the stock exchange PS10 Solar Power Tower PS20 Solar Power Tower Solana Solar Power Plant Telvent <laughs>